we've got our core vent going on here. We've already got the core vent across the water side here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but you should be able to look right through that. So essentially, this is our bug screen. So with this installed at the base, it's going to prevent anything from crawling up into our bug screen, uh, bunch flies, any type of little insects, creepy crawlies. On the ICF, on the Nadura ICF, we have a three quarter inch rain screen going on. You can see we've got one of the extrusions from new wall here, new wall siding, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But we're gonna transition from three quarter inch rain screen to a three eighths rain screen. Uh, I would prefer, honestly, I would prefer to go three quarter minimum throughout, but uh, we don't always get what we want. Uh, 3 8 rain screen absolutely meets code in our area. And 3 8 is the minimum required for drainage and drying. But again, I would prefer to have a larger, a larger dry or more drying potential, not a larger drying potential, but more drying potential uh, with something like three quarter. Either way, we're still going to get ventilation. We're going to have that airflow come in the bottom. It's going to go all the way up to, in this case, the rake line, and we'll have a vent up there as well. So air is going to be able to come in, pick up any type of moisture that happens to be between the siding and the sheathing, and pull it out the top. So intake is exhaust, essentially. I have to drill holes 16 inches on center in these aluminum extrusions so that I can put them on the wall. I don't know if you can see that, but there's the holes, 16 on center. Now, especially on a day like today, I don't want to keep pulling my tape out more than I have to. So I mark 16 on center on the table, and instead of measuring each piece, marking it out, I simply follow the marks at the table, and then we can take this and we can get this installed. <clears throat> so this is one, one piece of the U-trim that goes around the windows. I want it to be flush, in this case, with the bottom of the window. And then we've got these stainless steel washer heads from U2 fasteners so I don't have to worry about any type of galvanic reaction. Nice and flush. So aluminum frame, aluminum trim, spruce siding. So there's no issues there. And again, stainless goes a long ways to uh, ensuring we don't have any type of galvanic reaction. Well, it is time for a new bit. That's got a little bit of a wobble in it, but we're drilling a hole in this U-channel. Now the U-channel is not complete. This is a two-piece aluminum extrusion and if we got right in tight here, you'd be able to see uh, essentially a little bit of teeth where that other half of that U is going to snap right in there. Essentially, this U channel is going to form our starter moving up the slope on this, uh, well, <laughs> on the slope lot. And we want to drill a hole because the new wall siding that we're installing it is essentially a hollow core PVC siding. Any water that runs down gets caught in this U. We don't want it to get caught in tension, end up between the siding and the U freeze. Uh, as you know, if you've been following along, we have uh, some pretty serious freeze thaw cycles. Uh, in fact, we've had one today. It was snowing earlier and now in the sun, it's quite nice. But every chance that we can give water to escape and run out, that's what we're going to do. So we don't want water to freeze and force these U-channel or force 
the two pieces of the U-channel apart. We don't want water to pile up and be held in the siding. So every 16 inches, a little hole, just gives water a chance to escape. Essentially, I'm getting set up. We've got a bunch of this new wall, PVC siding that is going to be running up the wall here. I've got the angle figured out that we're going to cut. Uh, and there's two ways to get this angle consistently. Um, one is scribe every piece. Two is make a jig. Uh, essentially, I've used the squeeze jigs and that framing square to make a jig. So much the same as if I was laying out a set of stairs or if I was setting up to hand cut some rafters, I've got my square. I can slide it around, fit it wherever I need to for whatever length I need. And with my square in place, I've got my angle I can cut. If I need a shorter piece, same thing. And we'll show more on that as we're actually installing and getting up here. But having the jig ready to go, so when we get there ready to cut, it's important time-saving function. Great little saw for cutting these aluminum extrusions. It has just the right RPM with a good blade on it. Uh, we are due for a new blade there. Cuts these extrusions really well. And it kind of shows you what's going on here. These two-piece U-trims from New Wall, you can see the base or the first part of the U-trim is installed there. You can see inside the little teeth and that will accept this other piece here. And that just snaps in there, requires a bit of force, a little wrap with a rubber mallet or a nice cap on your hammer works very well. You can actually see over here where we've got the finished and U-trim, the finished part is snapped in place. It's a really good match with these salamander windows and doors. And we've got some of the PVC siding on here, making good progress. Uh, of course, everything could always be faster, but we're installing flashings as we go and a rain screen without uh, basically going up and down and over the house three or four times. So we, we build up or do a little bit, put the siding on, move up, do a little bit more. Uh, my experience, it's the most efficient way for a crew like ours to get things done. That way you're not utilizing the lift more than you have to or setting up staging or tearing down staging more than you have to. Making some custom mounting blocks. Essentially what we have is a four by eight sheet of VersaTech. We've got uh, several services that we have to mount on this house where there's just no off the shelf block that we could mount it on. Now, originally we wanted to do this with the smooth side of the VersaTech, but as you can see, uh, that came damaged I don't know what happens in the system, but every time we try and get the smooth side of VersaTech, it just, it always somehow handling, shipping, whatever, it gets trashed. But anyways, I'll show you what I'm thinking about for, or what we're gonna be doing for a mounting block. It's gonna be about 12 inches tall and fairly wide. It's not something you can buy off the shelf anywhere. And we've got, essentially a lot going on here. We've got our Aquar system hose bib. So hose bibs going to be right there. Uh, obviously electrical receptacle. And we have a future pull for uh, bringing actually an electrical feed out of the house uh, to supply a future garage or a future shed. So we'll get this made up. Uh, obviously we're going to have uh, a way for it to drain and, and flash it as well. But it's just not something you can readily just go anywhere and buy. So we've got to make it. And quite often with rain screens and whatnot, it's just, it's cleaner if we make it ourselves. This is a test fit. 
Uh, we still have to get our rain screen behind here, but this allows us to essentially service our services. Um, if we had to do maintenance on this aqua hose bib in the future, once this is all in place, basically you take a few screws out of the mounting block, remove the entire mounting block. As long as you're careful with the flashing that we'll be installing on top of this, cut the zip stretch tape, remove the hose bib, reinstall the hose bib, new stretch tape, that way you get to maintain your air barrier and you put your mounting block back together. Same with any of these for whatever reason, if you had to uh, remove this box. I don't know why you would need to remove the boxes, but if you had to pop it out, you can maintain the air barrier on any of these and still service what needs to be serviced.